Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Millennium Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight, and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. Wanda Boy Sipamandla Ndawonde. I stay in Alexandra, as in Johannesburg. I was born in Durban in a village called Inanda in 1989. Everything just changed when I was 16. My dad left us. It was a very difficult period for me because that's the stage where you need to choose which career path you take and you need to be focused and your metric means everything to you. For you to go out of poverty, you need to have good education. So at that stage, I told myself, you know what? You can just take this thing as a motivation to work harder and make something out of yourself. December 2010, Zanele Mabena, she works for Line of Africa Insurance. So she came with those application forms for the learnership. She gave it to everyone in church, and I was one of those people who took it and applied. Because I just told myself, you know what, you're good in math, you're good in accounting, it's financial industry, there's no way they won't yes. take you. I remember getting that call from Line of Africa Insurance. And she said, congratulations, you'll be joining us in the leadership program of 2011. I was so excited, I just went crazy, and everyone in the city was wondering, okay, what's going on, is it crazy now? I was so excited and elated about those, that good news. The other learners, they were so shy. For some strange reason, I was the one who was talking to of cracking jokes and laughing, so they thought this is the naughty one. <laughs> It's 20 years into South Africa's democracy, and a lot has changed, including its business environment. I'm on my way to Line of Africa Insurance, the only 100% black-owned short-term insurance company in the country. I'm curious to see how they're growing their business in the new South Africa, while assisting a young generation to benefit from the changing political landscape. They seem to be doing well. After all, the train I'm on, the How train, is one of their clients. Sixteen years since opening for business, Line of Africa is now the third largest short-term insurer in South Africa, servicing some of the country's leading companies and local authorities. It's a growing business in a highly competitive industry. This side, we've got our business analysts. Mm -hmm. So they report to IT. Then we've got now the IT department, and then this is engineering. Then we come here, this is claims department. We're going to go into the executives Rooms. Executive. Yeah, executive. You know, we come from the masses. So, so I need now. to, I didn't need to have a jacket or. I, you never know. This is Adam's office. There's a Makulubas. Makulubas in here. 
My name is Adam Somi. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Lion of Africa Insurance Company. I remember joining an insurance company um, in 1970. I just could not get the fact that, you know, your skin color defined who you were as a person. So Lion of Africa is in some ways a culmination of a struggle throughout my commercial life to demonstrate that South Africans, if only they could hold hands across the racial divide, can achieve so much more and become such a great nation. Transforming a country also means building an entirely new middle class of skilled professionals. And one way to successfully do this is through partnership programs that foster vocational training. Line of Africa Insurance has entered into a public-private partnership with the government of South Africa to develop the very people they want to bring into their industry. My name is Mashudu Mamatuba. I am the executive in charge of strategic planning and corporate affairs. Joburg for me is, everything is fast paced here. Everything is, it's almost like we do sleep, but we dream about the next day. It's a vibe that is progressive. The short term insurance industry is not as transformed in terms of who's coming in. We don't have enough young black talent coming in. So INCITA is looking for that transformation. They're creating that ability for the industry to transform. After democracy in 1994, the new government of unity actually decided that they needed to transform what was really a very discriminatory education system. INCITA is the Insurance Sector Education Training Authority. In the case of Lion of Africa, they access our short-term insurance qualification through their learnerships. Our big role is also to fund the learnership. So essentially we've taken the tax from Lion of Africa and then we redistribute the tax in terms of, of funding the, the learnerships that, that they've applied for. We bring in young people and we give them the opportunity to do something meaningful with their lives. So we bring them in, we put them in a room where we also give them real work to do, but in doing that, we teach them te technical conversation, the basics of insurance, but also just guiding them and really fielding those kind of questions that come up when the work is actually taking place. We need that young blood, we need those young minds to come in that are going to make sure that the, 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 the energy of Learn of Africa moves forward. When I look at some of the graduates and some of the learners that are now sitting in their jobs, I see them as successful already because they have started the journey. The fact that they're here means that they've got a sense of something better that they can do. The fact that they're here, they're willing to commit. I mean, I come in at six. Others are already here. I leave at eight. They're rushing to still go catch the bus and the train. I see these learners and I'm filled with pride. Nice one. Yes. This is home. This is my home. I love this place. You explained that you used to walk from Alex to Sand. Yes, definitely. I used to walk from extension eight all the way to Sandton. So I used to walk all this way to Sand. This Sand. To those buildings over there. In yes, the fire. those buildings. It was a one hour, 30 minutes walk going there and another hour, 30 minutes getting back. I had a choice of taking a taxi, but I just decided to walk so that I can provide more money for my mother and my siblings. So it was my personal decision to make that sacrifice for my family. I respect you for that, nice one. Yeah. After two years of training, Lion took us, took us uh, permanently. I was so happy. I called my mom. My first salary when I was taken permanently, I gave it to my mom. The whole salary? Yes, the whole salary. I'm so proud of myself that I am able to provide for them, buying them clothes, paying for the school fees. So I'm like their father figure not just a brother. You're never gonna know who you're sitting with. That's the thing, that's the beauty about this. You could be sitting with somebody that could ultimately become the head person at a big insurance company. 
you need to make sure that whatever it is that you do, you are imparting or assisting somebody to become the best of themselves. And that is what the name of the game is. That is the true transformation element that you've, you've created there. I feel so good about my future because all the managers at Lion always motivate me. In fact, currently Lion of Africa is paying for my become degree at UNISA. It's not about your conditions. It's about how you think. It's about how you retaliate to that particular challenges you are facing. Because you can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to it. So that once you get it right there, will never go wrong. Education is critical for any nation to survive because education brings about independence, people acquire knowledge, and people also acquire skills, and the people even have dignity in terms of how they carry themselves and whatever they do. So education is, is vital. What's the payoff though? I mean, why is Line of Africa involved in learnerships? We want to be able to, to show that through our programs, our people actually acquire meaningful skills, both for themselves and for the company, because that's the trade-off. It is that that fills me with tremendous pride, that in some small way, we have helped to provide an environment for these youngsters to begin to realize their potential, to at least begin to think about the present in a different way, and in that way, look forward to perhaps a better future. We need you to do well, because when you do well, you bring your community along with you. You bring your family with you. We need you to succeed, guys. Absolutely, we do. Thank you. South Africa is a country of many contrasts, and since democracy eclipsed the apartheid state decades ago, its people have been free. But the struggle for the most basic of human rights continues, the right to a decent, affordable home and a dignified living space. Even for South Africa's growing middle class, the problem persists. For the years during apartheid, certain population segments weren't allowed to live in the cities, and therefore, as the uh, country has transitioned into a democratic society where people are free to move, we found there is still some segregation within the real estate market. South Africa, of its population of over 50 million, has about 12 and a half million households. Of that 12 and a half million households, five million of those would fall within the category of a workforce um, income level, that $250 to $2,500 per month. And those households are experiencing quite a shortage of supply of housing. And a lot of that is due to the fact that historically they could not live close to where they work. And now that they are able to do so, they're finding that there just isn't an availability of houses either to rent or to buy. We've come to downtown Johannesburg to meet Sula Proxenos, managing partner at International Housing Solutions, a global private equity investor committed to helping change the status quo. So this is it, Joburg. There's something about this city. It really is. You located a problem and you came up with a solution. The idea was to find a way to bring capital into the affordable housing space in South Africa. 
This is where people can afford to pay for their own housing, but that the private sector really hasn't been able to provide this housing. Um, historically, that getting mortgages was much harder, but that really has all changed. So this creates a great business opportunity, and at the same time, it, it fills a social need. The fund is called the South African Workforce Housing Fund, and it really is designed for um, families who are in the workforce. We were able to raise a little over $200 million um, into the fund and um, using this money, this equity, we were able to finance over 27,000 units of housing across South Africa. And so this, for example, where we're standing now is our very first project. Um, it's very, very exciting. It was a conversion of an office building um, into residential real estate in the inner city of Johannesburg. This building was actually mothballed when we bought it alongside with our partners and um, was now converted into over 400 affordable housing units. A project like this was very much part of the renaissance of the inner city of Johannesburg. Um, we certainly single-handedly did not turn around the city, but it's um, been very important to show the confidence in the inner city, which really is going through a renaissance as we speak. The rentals start at about $200 a month um, and they go up to about $400 um, to $500 a month. So very much in the affordable space, right in the heart of the city. So for a, a couple that are working in the city, very little transportation costs, um, very little commuting time and great access to a lot of employment and good public transport network. With idea in hand, Sula set about seeking investors. It was crucial to get the big players on board early to encourage confidence. I feel enormously proud of what the fund has achieved, but also for the fact that City was one of the early investors. And it was because of our um, leap into the fund that actually attracted other investors to come in. So we enabled the progress of the fund uh, by being an, an early investor. I'd heard about another IHS project, a mixed-use residential suburb called Fleurhof, about 40 minutes west of the city. It was built on a former buffer zone between the township of Soweto and the formerly whites only Rudapurt. Fleurhof's just a few years old, but already a community has emerged. It's a close-to-work address that people seem proud to call home. My guide is the busiest person in Fleurhof. Estate agent Wisdom Sikale, who works 24-7 and always lands the deal. So how long have you been an estate agent? I've been an estate agent for six years now. How's it treating you? It's very nice. I like it. I like working with people. Yeah. I've heard about you, that you, you're the man. If anyone wants to buy a house in Fleurhof, you're the guy. Definitely they are right, those people. I'm the guy. Everybody knows me in Fleurhof. I've sold absolutely each and every street a house. Really? How are you doing? I mean, how's business for you? How's well, business is fine, especially on this side, because most of the people here, it's a new couple, young couples. Yeah. And the area is very good for business work. Right? Hello. I'm Pili, Lisa. Uh, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. How are you? I'm great, thanks. And how are you? I want to buy a house. <laughs> oh, <No>. okay. <laughs> you can have a seat. You guys Thank can have you. a seat. Thank you guys you can have a seat. Oh, this is great, <laughs> Thomas. This is so cool. <laughs> it is my own home. <laughs> how long have you had it? Um, since December last year. When I met Wisdom, he introduced me to these houses, and I felt, well, I pay less here buying and having a bond other than renting um, a flat and it was a one bedroom flat. This is like a two bedroom house. That's amazing. So I don't yeah. know why more people don't do that. You've got, a, think, you've got yeah. property, equity, bricks. And an investment. It's a good investment. So for a few hundred rands less than you were renting, you now own a property. You own this? I own this. It is mine. I know the feeling. It's a great feeling. Yeah. It's a beautiful feeling. It's mine. Yeah. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> The great beauty of owning a property is that you have the opportunity to create wealth through capital appreciation. And this has been denied to many, many South Africans for generations. And this is an opportunity to right that wrong. For a lot of people in Africa, I think I see a lot of resilience, I see determination, so I see a lot of people trying and struggling to make ends meet and to survive. 
It is because of the resilience of people of Africa that we now have high rapid economic growth rate in Africa, that we also have a lot of opportunities for them. But I also see a lot of challenges. But overall, I think people of Africa are enterprising, they are willing to take risk, and they are motivated to do more. The importance of the private sector in all of these partnerships is because the private sector is actually the engine of growth for Africa. The private sector has helped to produce 70% of Africa's output. It has also helped to generate 90% of employment opportunities on the African continent. And so uh, partnerships are very essential to drive development agenda in Africa. I think this is the great story of Africa. It's the rising middle class, it's this consumer class who is able to actually buy and pay for services that is offering businesses um, of a number of different kinds and this huge opportunity to do great business in Africa. I went to the bank and approached for, 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 for finance. I said, no, yes, you can qualify. Then I said, oh, my, my darling, let's go for it. I'm going for it. It took about around about two weeks and it was approved by then. I said, oh yes, thank God. But I didn't tell my parents yet. I said, no, let me keep quiet. Um, but I was excited by then. First thing we came to this place of flare off and then we came to this house. I was very, very nervous when we, we parked my car outside there. And then like enough, uh, we came into the gate and then he opened the door, I said, oh, wow. I saw everything, I said, no, you know what, I'm going for it. I'm very proud of myself. It's a good place, this. Yeah, it's very, it's very nice place. It's a very nice place. City has always been very committed to making a positive contribution to the economic transformation process in South Africa. And one of the elements of that is empowerment of historically disadvantaged individuals. We felt the best thing that we could do to make a positive contribution would be to invest equity into the root cause of the problem, which was to to invest in a fund that would build houses for sale for people within that income level, but also rehabilitate the inner cities and create a supply of rental properties. With better paying jobs over the past years, many South Africans have been able to move out of townships like neighboring Soweto, from where the majority of Fleurhof homeowners originate. Overcrowding, crime and lack of amenities in large parts of the township have been replaced with a totally different lifestyle just up the road. Flohof offering a very important physical expression of upward mobility and an exciting new lifestyle for South Africa's growing middle class. The transport, the transport is very reliable here. There are taxis along the road, there are buses, there's a recreation centre as well, there's a crash as well. And then now I think they're starting to build a school as well. Past and future stand side by side in Fleurhof, but it's the kids of the suburb who hold the energy and dreams of an even brighter tomorrow. They've had a very different upbringing to many of their parents and have powerful imaginations about what's possible for them in the future. What kind of a house do you want to live in when you're big? I want to live in a mansion. It's going to be a, I want everything in the house to be red. Red? And jacuzzi. Ah, a jacuzzi. You know, there are a lot of competing places for people to put their dollars. For the continent, for the African continent, to attract capital, we really have to put our best foot forward and give a really strong and smart business plan um, as to how this capital will be deployed. Our engagement with IHS is not a gift, it is an investment. And what that does, at the end of the day, it has a way of reinforcing each other, that we benefit, the society around us benefits. And that is why we want to be here. We want to use that to bend the arc of history towards progress for this continent. I really firmly believe we only live once, and so you really need to take an idea that you have, to have the confidence in it, and to go for it. And the worst case scenario is it doesn't work. And the best case scenario? Is it works like this, and you really have the opportunity to turn around and say, I've been part of the creation of over 27,000 units of housing in a country that desperately needs affordable housing. And the opportunity to replicate this across the entire African continent. Mm -hmm.